This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, let me give you a fair warning. They do talk about how an animal had to be eliminated. And so people who can't hear stuff like that probably should go. I'm very sorry, but we're going to talk about the legal implications of this. And it's, you're just going to have to, that's, this is the subject matter. Someone killed an animal and we have to decide whether this has broken the law. Okay. So fair warning. Don't want to get anybody down about an animal being hurt. The animal is out of its misery. And the question is whether it was done properly, whether it's legal and whether this person should have put it on Twitter. So let's take a look here. Yes, this is QC versus Fox. So Joe Malgum, Malcolm, 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 and it's Jolian, Jolian, Joe Lion, Malgum, QC. Do we know what QC stands for? Queen's Court. You said he was from UK, right? Yes. Like that's Queen's not Queen's Council. Queen's Council. Okay, so QC means Queen's Council. He's a barrister, and he says. Already this morning, I have killed a fox with a baseball bat. How's your boxing day going? And this is at 12.10 a.m., which is what, 10 after midnight, at, uh, on 26 December. So it's basically just after Christmas Day. He says, I didn't enjoy killing it, but I imagine that's what the RSPCA would have done, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, I'm guessing, uh, if they had to call anyone in central London on Boxing Day, if they had anyone to call on in central London on Boxing Day. Uh, the chickens were pretty distressed, which is why I raced down in the first place even after the fox was dispatched. They were upset by its presence. Not sure what would have happened had I left the fox live in situ about two feet from the chickens. Doesn't have a gun, so he can't shoot it. He's allowed to keep chickens, and he was wearing a kimono. Wasn't a great deal of fun. Like, can we talk about how bad of an idea this was to put on Twitter in the first place? I mean, forgetting if there's any legal consequences to putting it on Twitter, it's a bad idea to talk about some of the things that people have to do. Uh, naturally, my brain goes straight to, oh, let's pull from a personal example. What did I just say? Don't talk about it publicly. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it was a bad idea to talk about it publicly on Twitter just because, but apparently, there might actually be a law that says you can't do this. The RSPCA told British media it was investigating and in a tweet urged people with first-hand knowledge to call them. The Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, a council that covers a vast stretch of central London, has noted that there are two legal methods that can be used to dispose of foxes. Shooting, which is too dangerous in urban areas, or lethal injection, which is expensive and can only be administered by vets. Pest control companies will kill foxes. If you decide to employ someone to kill a fox on your property, you will be responsible for the costs, which can be considerable. Public advice by the UK government says foxes trapped are protected under animal welfare acts and must be killed humanely. It warns that persons can be jailed and fined up to £20,000 or $37,000 for causing... Oh, that's Australian? Okay, £20,000 would be $26,000 in the U.S. Uh, fox hunting with dogs was banned in 2005. However, hounds can still be used to track animals before they are shot. In years since the Conservative Party's election manifestos have pledged to offer MPs a free vote on whether to reverse the ban, but in a change of course, Bojo dropped that long-standing position earlier this year and said the government would make no changes to the Hunting Act. So what do we think? Do we think the Royal Society is going to file a complaint and charge him with the inhumane killing of a fox? Uh, if so, if if the if the law really is that you are not allowed to both trap a fox and kill it without using the proper method, then yeah, he's violated the law and then advertised it on Twitter. So one thing to keep in mind, like the person we're talking about, people in the UK will know, but this is a person who has been taking the government to court a few times, is <laughs> quite a vivid remainder. 
So if there's someone who already has a target on his back, this is something you don't want to advertise on Twitter. Because people will try and push for this for him to get investigated and possibly charged for it. Okay, so the Guardian, the Guardian is now saying that RSPCA investigators have taken photographs in his garden and London home as the debate continues over whether he was justified by his actions. There have been 10,500 replies. Animal welfare workers expressed sadness, which they say that killing the fox was a needless act. It is deeply saddening that anyone should react this way when coming face to face with a wild animal. The fox was trapped in netting surrounding his hen house, which he has said his violent response was triggered by the grief of losing chickens to foxes in the past. No one should relish killing animals. I certainly didn't. Many or most councils in London treat foxes as an urban pest. Ah, uh, I mean, this is where we start to get into the debate a little bit. I think the foxes were there first. I don't mean that particular fox was there, but I think, yeah. I think foxes existed in the wild before London was created. And I, so, you know... When you create an urban environment where animals used to live, you know, pressure of humans spreading puts pressure on the animals to still have to survive. It's not like the animal just stops trying to survive and says, up oh, the humans won. It doesn't work like that. So to me, it's extremely disingenuous to forget that, to forget that the animal and the humans are trying to coexist. And the human obviously has a big advantage. A wildlife consultant with Foxagon. <laughs> We're, here we are talking about the hexagon trademark, and here we've got Foxagon, which helps individuals and businesses with humane fox deterrence, suggests that Mockham Moch, may have committed an offense under the Wildlife Act. The law makes it an offense to mutilate, kick, beat, nail, or otherwise impale, stab, burn, stone, crush, drown, drag, or asphyxiate any wild mammal with intent to inflict unnecessary suffering. So then, did he have the intent to inflict unnecessary suffering? I don't know. If he hit it in the head with a baseball bat, and it was successful, I mean, even if he wasn't successful in the first try, but if it was an intention to kill it with the first blow and not make it suffer, but if it was an intention to su make it suffer, I don't know, this sounds like the kind of case where they might not actually charge him because he didn't have the mens rea or criminal intent. However, it was an incredibly stupid thing to do. Depends how English law works. That's true. I'm not, a, I'm not an English lawyer. I do not know how English law works. I know how American law works, and mostly. I, I know in Scottish law, intent doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you intend to do it or not. It's if you did it or you did not do it, that's, okay. that's it. So intent doesn't matter as much in, in, Scottish, law. in Scottish law. Which is different. So we'll see what happens with London. Wood said it was not uncommon for foxes to become trapped in netting of the kind used in children's football goals or bird netting to keep them away from growing fruit, but it should not usually be possible for one to become trapped in a chicken coop. Any coop that poses a risk to foxes also poses a risk to hens that it is supposed to protect, says Tara Kenward, who keeps chickens in southeast London. While a number of scare stories have circulated in recent years about foxes, including that they spread diseases or attack children. Some experts say they are beneficial. You should learn to live with the urban fox. If you take the fox out of the equation, then you are overrun with other things that you don't want. If you've got foxes, you will not have rats, for example. Their natural food intake would be a mixture of rodents. When we go underneath houses, we find a lot of squirrel remains. Funnily enough, with rats, they appear to kill them, but don't eat them. Even they know that rats aren't good eating. <laughs> wow. So what do you think of that? In Fox Law, this is considered a dick move. <laughs> Says sausage toads. <laughs> Cute. Uh, let's, do a, let's do a quick Twitter search or two and see about RSPCA. Yep, that's the one right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and like Mahith said, the Daily Mail literally wants his head, and that's the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail wants his head? <laughs> well, I don't know about uh, the Daily Mail. They're not always. Uh, that's Australia. That's New South Wales. See, when they say Wales, <laughs> I think of the Welsh in the UK. Gosh, you're not making this easy for us. 
geographically challenged Americans, are you? They've pinned it. <laughs> it's now pinned. <laughs> we are aware of a situation regarding a fox and would like to reassure people that we're investigating due to the very high volume of tweets. We can't respond to every single one. Oh, I, I'll, I'll have to retweet this from my account that's logged in on the other browser. Yeah, I don't see any other tweets about it. So it looks like they only issued the one tweet, um, the one official tweet. Uh, it doesn't. It won't let me view tweets and replies unless I log in. Great, yeah. great, great Twitter. Thank you. So we'll keep apprised of that one, and hopefully by the time this is, if it's produced, it you know we'll figure out whether they have uh, resolved the situation, and then we'll talk about it. I um I don't know if this was America. I don't believe anyone would be charged for the offense, but I guess it can also vary from state to state. And if the state does say don't kill foxes because they aren't as bad as people think they are, um, then you don't kill foxes. Uh, for instance, in Pennsylvania, I don't know if this is a, a, a federal thing or not, but for a while praying mantises, I don't, praying mantis, praying manta, manta, I don't know. Praying mantises were protected and you didn't kill them. And the population is starting to come back. I believe they've come off of the either endangered or protected species list. And so, I mean, I'm not, I don't go around killing them anyway, but um, uh, we have now seen more praying mantis in my area. Um, now we have a problem, the opposite problem. We have a problem with the spotted lantern fly, which is an invasive species, which is taking over everything. And my mother runs around the backyard with her bug assault shooting them. My mother. <laughs> your mother joined your dad? Uh, my mother is took it from my dad. Yeah, because I remember a year ago, your dad introduced me like, this is a lantern fly. Splash. Yes. And then, um, and then mom, when they got the bug assault, mom really liked it. So she goes around and shoots the lantern flies oh. with the bug assault. Look what you wrote. Under English law, private prosecution is possible. The RSPCA can charge without needing to get crown prosecution involved. Cool. Interesting. So yeah, um, mostly that's a lesson about how you shouldn't advertise your crimes. Basically, I mean, I'm not encouraging anyone to commit crimes, but just basic general legal principles, don't advertise your crimes. Commit one crime at a time, don't advertise your crimes. Maybe we should start making a list. How to Break the Law by Leonard French. <sighs> and the thing is, I'm sure that he had, uh, you know, an emotion. It was hard for him in, some, in one sense to do that. Like, it was midnight, it's dark, it's cold, it's England, so you know it's probably wet. <laughs> and he has, he hears his chickens, you know, upset. I, I, I don't live with chickens. I don't actually know what it sounds like when the fox gets in the hen house, but I imagine there's a lot of cackling and I bet the fox is also making noises and fox noises at least as far as I can tell from Scotland, sound like a child screaming times 10. So a distressed fox probably also sounds very much in distress. I'm not defending the guy, but let's at least hear his perspective. He was probably distressed too, and probably very happy to get the thing over with as fast as possible. I don't know if that means it's the right or wrong thing to do. And maybe he shouldn't be fined the 20,000 pounds. Maybe it should be a slap on the wrist and a don't do it again. And, you know, look what you did to your career or at least public face by tweeting about it. But like, come on, if Leonard French was walking home from the restaurant just now and some guy like tried to assault Kaylee and I, you'd bet I'd be here talking about it and being like, oh, and then like if I said I threw a punch back, and somebody came on and said, you know, in Luxembourg, you're not allowed to throw a punch back. And now you're being reported to the police and now the police are investigating. Mm. Eh, you can sort of see how it happens. Oh, yeah. but I'm, I'm like not saying the guy like was completely wrong in the moral sense to want to talk about his stressful situation. Oh, yeah. I think he was wrong to kill the fox, yeah. but he was stressed out about it, I think. But I mean, also bear in mind, like this is the guy that is suing the government, wanting to stop Brexit lawfully. So, I mean, he only has, like, the biggest target on the back. Mm. Yeah, that's another problem. When you when you do stuff like that, you do paint the giant target on your back. 
And then certain prosecutors, if the prosecutor doesn't like you, they just won't give you a deal. And that's one of the things I wanted to point out about prosecutorial discretion was sort of the reverse unfair discrimination that can happen. It's not in reverse, but I'm trying to give it a direction because of where it comes from. Instead of the law prosecuting you because of who you are, they just don't give you a deal because of who you are if you have already screwed up. And that's, I think, unfair because even if you're contrite, your beliefs or position or previous public action might influence a prosecutor to not give you a deal when you would normally deserve one. And that's sort of a reverse of a unfair discrimination issue. It's still unfair discrimination. It's not really, so, there's really no such thing as a reverse discrimination, but it's in the opposite direction than we would normally think about it. What does the fox say? Well, you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, it's not, eh, 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 it's more like, <laughs> and it's really, really bad. It's much worse than that. Much worse. Much worse than that. I lost many sleeps of fox mating or mate calling. Yeah. Yeah, we heard them outside Kaylee's uh, window in Scotland. There were obviously several foxes. We saw some of them too. Yeah. They're beautiful. Yes, they are. And they just, they scream. Foxes scream. They also pick stupid places because they do it on the middle of the road. Yeah, they're not, you know, for as, for as smart and agile as they are, they sometimes don't seem it. They sometimes seem really dumb. <laughs> But I guess for being that smart and agile, like if I was to lunge at a fox, like it's just going to like step to the side and be like, run away. So Jabberwocky says you can even be prosecuted with no evidence supporting the crimes. They can punish you monetarily even if you did nothing wrong. Jeez. Maybe these are some of the laws that us Americans started a revolution over. No mens rea, no evidence, and you can still be prosecuted? You still need evidence. Like, <laughs> I know, I know uh, English law is special, but not that special. Ugh. Fox is a cat software running on dog hardware. That's That sounds closer. Yeah. So that's our show. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This is Lawful Masses, your favorite legal education and legal news YouTube channel and Twitch channel and content creation, community organization, whatever. Thank you to our supporters from patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsors.com slash law at the $50 level in the month of December. Thank you to Aspernari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan de Grey, Daniel Perez, Snorri Wazatsky, Blackleaf, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Steven, Rumble in the Bunghole, and Cute Grills in your area. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters for the month of December who are scrolling in front of me on the crawl on the videos that drop. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Have a happy new year, and I'll see you in the videos that drop. Love you all. Bye.
<laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm okay. 